You're listening to Community Radio, CKMS, Radio Waterloo, 1, 2, 7, 9, 4 to 6, on the Rogers Digital Network. Morning, Waterloo Region. Happy Monday to you. It's November the 2nd. Snow is on the ground and we're only halfway through fall. We're in the middle of our fundraising season here, so if you enjoy CKMS Community Connections, if you enjoy community radio, if you enjoy what we offer here on Radio Waterloo, head out to the internet web address radiowaterloo.ca slash give and give a donation. We depend on our community members to support the radio station so that we can bring you shows like CKMS Community Connection, so that we can call out and interview band members, so that we can have people come into the studio and do a live in-studio performance. Those are always fun. But it requires your support. So have a look at radiowaterloo.ca slash give. Look at the total that's on the board there. There are about $530 or so. That's less than a quarter of where we want to be by the end of the week. So provide a donation, and I'll get out of your hair and let you listen to some music by Tomaco. We'll be talking to Denny from Tomaco in just a few minutes, as soon as I get him on the phone. Tomaco, this is Shady Nasty. by Tamako, a uh, Toronto-based band. And I have Denny on the phone from Tamako. Good morning, Denny. Welcome to CKMS Community Connections. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're welcome. You are sure, or Tamako is sure, a high-energy band. What, uh, yeah. <laughs> what sort of music would you, would you call what it is you play? I mean, it isn't, it isn't metal music. It isn't, it isn't your standard rock and roll. What, what, what have you got there? I like to call it like funk rock or rock and roll with some funk I like this change up between those two it's um, really fun to keep the energy really high for audiences um, when we had live shows there. yeah yeah that's got to yeah. be a bit of a crimp there I mean uh, you've got probably a good dancing music I think I can see a whole crowd just jumping and 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 enjoying themselves on the dance floor yeah that's that's definitely the goal and it's really great when we're able to pull that off at a show and had some really fun times where you get the whole audience going um, from dancing to moshing, which is the fun of going from like harder rock to funk. You can kind of go, uh, you know, have a bit of variety in what the audience is doing. Yeah. So is, is it really funk that you're playing there or is it some variation? Uh, we kind of, it goes song by song. Like we'll have some songs that are very funky, like almost James Brown-esque. Oh. Um, in terms of like influence, and then we have some more like uh, more traditional like classic rock influence kind of songs. So it's definitely a bit older, but we are trying to incorporate more modern influences um, and some other bands, some indie bands, and like 
I guess, black keys or white stripes, that kind of thing. Okay, not bands that I'm familiar with. Uh, funk is, is not uh, sort of the, the go-to music that I would listen to. More into oh. uh, electronica and, and jazz and, and uh, you know, things of, uh, of a, a slightly slower and, and uh, mellower nature. Ah, uh, I understand. <laughs> Actually, funk has sort of led me to listening to a bit more jazz lately just because funk got me into, like, horns and saxophones and, and whatnot, and as a result, just to kind of led me into jazz and funk kind of start getting a bit of fusion there you can start hearing some influences and lines in funk songs that are jazz inspired and then there's some jazzy artists who have a bit more of a funky groove and a bit faster pace which sort of got me into jazz it's it's definitely not the kind of thing you hear in a uh, in a rock band you know saxophone is not your typical rock instrument yeah um it's definitely part of uh what encouraged me to put it in there just to sort of stand out a bit. I really liked horns and uh, wanted to stand out more than just the traditional four-piece drum, bass, guitar, vocals. And it was a really fun addition, although it can be a bit heavy bringing a guitar and a saxophone rig with me around, which is not a problem anymore <laughs> as much since uh, we're not doing shows. Yeah, uh, you just have them all lined up in the back there and, and reach for whatever instrument you need to... Uh... To, yeah, to play exactly. on, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can't be any worse than a drummer, though. You know, a drummer has to carry a whole bunch of kit. So yeah, that's that's definitely. If you're the drummer who has to provide the kit, as as a um, indie bands, we usually work together to provide um, backline, which is all the equipment uh, we'll be using for the show. So if one band may bring uh, the drums, and, and another band may bring amplifiers. So if you're the drummer from a band who isn't bringing drums, all you need is your cymbals, stuff that you might break, and uh, okay. your sticks, and that's not too bad. Okay. And and stuff yeah. like drum kit setup is pretty standard across all drummers. Yeah, the only time that ever gets weird is uh, some left-handed versus right-handed drummers. They <laughs> might flip some parts of the drums, but that's, that's something you can change while everybody okay. else is plugging in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a nice local band called Parallax Error, uh, where uh, Sam Hill, the drummer, has a huge uh, lineup, you know, 20 items in, in his drum kit. That's not oh, wow. Kind of, yeah, not the kind of thing that you can easily drag from venue to venue. Definitely not. That would be a, a treat. Like, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the time you'll end up almost like a stripped-down jazz kit where you only even have one tom and the, just, like, the bass uh, for the kick drum and snare and a couple cymbals, and that's it. So it requires a bit of versatility when you're playing a venue, yeah, a shared venue. Exactly. You have to be, as an indie band, it's, you're kind of at the whim of what the venue has, whether you're the drummer or guitar player and that kind of thing. So you just have to adapt and try to make your sound the best it can be with what you have. Right, right. So you've got a huge lineup. I mean, I was looking at the um, uh, setup for... Um, well, just just a picture you've got on your website there. You know, we've got what seven oh, people, yeah. seven people on the uh, uh, on the screen there on the uh, on the picture. So, you want to introduce the band? Sure. Yeah. Um, if currently our lineup, I think that picture might be. Uh, I mean, we have, I think we've changed the drummer since then. But currently, our drummer, his name is Jesse, and he's from Waterloo. Um, I think we might have some more recent pictures with him, the full seven person setup. Yeah, he's actually our only member from Waterloo, so he's from your part of the province, and uh, he's been playing with us for just over a year, around a year now, unfortunately. He only had a few shows before everything kind of locked down, but uh, we're still rehearsing with them. Okay. We have Nate uh, on guitar, and we have Jesse Hayden on bass, uh, and then we've got our two backup singers. Uh, they are... Sappho and Cassie, uh, they, and then finally we have Charlie Ziegler, who's on keys. Um, that's like our big show lineup. Like when we have a special show and everybody's yeah. available, we kind of bring all these people out. It's got to be a yeah. big show, all right. Yeah, yeah, but it's got to be a big enough stage. Like there are some times where it's like going to be an interesting show, but we just don't do it because there's no room for uh, all the members on stage. And you've had some pretty big venues in the past from what I was reading there. Yeah, um, we've been fortunate enough to play, I guess Lee's Palace would be our largest venue. We've played the Rivoli and the Monarch at Tavern and also Horseshoe Tavern, and those are yeah. kind of venues where we bring uh, the full band. A huge, huge 
um, reputation. Yeah, they, 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 they help, in a way it helps uh, get people out because they recognize the name of the venue and they're like, oh, I know that place, and so it's, they're a bit more excited to come out when they hear you're playing at a venue where there's a bit of history behind it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What sort of following do you get? I mean, how long have you been together? Uh, so the band has been playing since, I guess it'll be almost four years, so it's 2016, we started playing our first show at a cool venue that was it's gone now. It's called The Central. It used to be right beside, uh, uh, right over at Bathurst and Bloor, where the um, mm. they've done all the construction and everything, getting rid of Honest Ed's. Yeah, yeah so it was yeah. right in there. Um, and that was a really cool venue we played there. Um, and now, with that kind of members have come and gone, but we've still been playing for uh, about four years altogether. Um, and the following is kind of shifted it's like the numbers have sort of stayed steady because we've shifted from friends and family more to some bands where like they they come out to your shows but you know if you're playing every month for four years they're it's going to slow down a little bit so you have to sort of replace the friends and family with people who are really into keen to coming to shows more and more yeah exactly and i guess that's that's all kind of shut down now have you been switching to online well, we did do one online stream uh, back, it was October 8th, was mm-hmm. our first setup. It's a bit more intense to try to get uh, like a whole band set up for streaming. Uh, it's easier to do just kind of solo stuff for fun, but we did, uh, it was just the four of us in a living room, which was really cool, but we were very fortunate um, to do the stream, and it was with, um, so with some great, like, we had a couple cameras and lights and everything. So we were really fortunate to be able to do it. I think the guys that we had were, let me see if I can find it, but the, uh, yeah, it was on Twitch, which is the best live streaming site. So I would suggest using that one. They have been getting in trouble okay. for live music, though, unfortunately. Um, but Facebook was also having the same issue. Yeah. Um, getting in yeah, trouble was, with copyright issues and the like? Yeah, copyright issues. But, um, their guys who ran it were fortunate. They're called Nortown Music, and they have kind of, doing this to keep uh, the indie music scene live, and they were telling me that, yeah, Facebook, like, they will shut down your stream after a few minutes of the yeah. music because they're afraid of uh, copyright people coming, so they first asked us not to do any covers. Yeah. And we're like, that's okay, but we, Twitter was a bit easier for them to use as a main Right, right. We, we ran yeah. into that problem when we were um, simulcasting on uh, an internet stream, video stream, and uh, YouTube and Facebook will uh, blank out to the audio, or uh, you know, just shut the stream down altogether. So uh, entirely familiar with that idea. Yeah, it's uh, definitely been something that's been really coming more and more over the past years. They're just getting much better at finding and tr- shutting down stuff for copyright with music. But the problem is, when, when you're doing it, this is your music that you're playing. You have the rights to perform your own music. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's surprising that they would even you know, dude, for just live original music, they, I, they just try not to risk, I guess. Yeah. Or I'm not even sure why they're doing it to shut down like that. Yeah. Algorithms, you know, uh, software. Blame it all mm-hmm. on the blame it all on the software. Yeah, there's no <laughs> human monitoring. It's just the computer yeah. just following its you know programming. Yeah. You have something you'd like to play? Uh, one of our songs. Yeah, one of your songs. Sure. I've got um, some stuff from the the Vagabond album, which is the one that you released, what, earlier this year? Last year, actually, uh, 2019. Yeah, last year. So about a year ago, or a little bit more than a year ago. But yeah, back in September 2019. Mm-hmm. It's our last one. I'm working on the new one now. Um, yeah, from the that one, I guess, if you like some more upbeat music, the single we have a music video for is Mr. Twister. Mr. Twister. That's the one that's uh, on the front page of YouTube. It's, I think, the one that uh, displays... When uh, you're going to the uh, Tamako website, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I, I, I built the website myself uh, back uh, when I thought we were going to do festivals this summer. I wanted to have a uh, at least somewhat reasonable-looking website, so yeah. I built it myself before applying. <laughs> but had that didn't pan out either. <laughs> so I'm going to try to play this from the YouTube feed, and then uh, we'll sure. see whether or not uh, I can uh, patch that into our own video stream. We'll see whether or not we get cut off this time. Yeah, we'll see how it goes, yeah. yeah. Let me know. This is Mr. Twister from Tamako.
Sure is funky. That's Mr. Twister by Tamako. I've got uh, Denny from Tamako on the phone. Good morning, Denny. Good morning. That looked Thank like you. a really interesting video. The bits that we were able to see at any rate were um, cool. Um, the room is draped with the Twister game floor pads. Yeah. So, so go give me a bit of background there. Tell me what was going on there. So all I did was I just moved all the furniture out of my living room and went around trying to hunt down some Twister games through, like, trading set websites and whatnot for uh, the Twister Twister music video. I just wanted something that was kind of a cool theme and got, like, matching jackets for the band uh, and the kind of tied into the name of the song, um, Mr. Twister. The whole idea of the song is sort of just, like, uh, about just how entertainers kind of distract you from uh, what's kind of going on in the world. So the twisting, kind of like all the facts and everything around, and Twister is the game where you twist, so I thought it was a good fit. <laughs> it is a good fit, and it, it's a really unique look to that. You know, lots of uh, bright colors, lots of action on the screen, so you know, that's, is that what the live shows are like? Yeah, yeah, definitely try to keep it very lively, lots of bright colors. We always, uh, we used to dress up pretty funny for some of our shows, we just kind of think of some fun themes um now we have like our cool matching jean jackets that we wear for a lot of them or or change it up sometimes for fun but uh we did that for the like live stream we did back in october um which is last month already wow yeah i, Time know, is flying. I know it is in the uh, middle well beginning of uh, november here you know halfway through fall and snow on the ground yeah we can use a little bit of high energy music yeah it's definitely really handy with just kind of when you're trying to clean up your house or, you know, get going in the day. It's like, like throwing some high-energy stuff to get me going and then, you know, slow it down a little bit, but don't wind. Who needs coffee? Exactly. What, what made you choose this particular genre of music to, to play? Uh, it's always what I've been really into. Um, I started in high school mainly being kind of a classic rock guy, and then I got more into funk, uh, like through Parliament Funkadelic and James Brown and... Uh, like even Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Sly the Family Stone as I got into university and started writing my own tunes. I just gave it a little bit of a unique twist so it wasn't this, just another classic rock or wannabe classic rock band right. from the 2000s, and that way it gave it a little bit more of a different twist, yeah. doing the keyboards and stuff, yeah. yeah. But funk is hardly mainstream. Yeah, I mean, it used to be a bit more mainstream uh, back in, like, the 70s and 80s with, like, Rick James. Yeah, um, yeah. You hear a lot of that. And even Prince was pretty funky. And James Brown had, like, a whole huge thing way back. But uh, yeah, it had a bit of a resurgence back when I was actually getting into it. With uh, You might remember Daft Punk did that sort of Get Happy was an entirely, like, funk record. I think they had Nile Rodgers, if I remember, on that record as a guitar player. Mm-hmm. He's from, he did like the Chic back in the day. Uh, they had, and then there was uh, Uptown Funk with like Bruno Mars. So yeah, yeah it was yeah, kind of doing yeah. a bit of a revival. You're okay. hearing a lot of, and hip hop is all, was all the original samples were all pulled from James Brown and Problem of Funk exactly. So there's a lot of funk there, even if it's not like a well-known genre. <laughs> right, right. Uh, we've got a, yeah. a whole, um, well, we used to have a whole show in the evening, uh, you know, just uh, funk pulled from our digital music library. So this will be a, a yeah. good addition to that. Well, I don't think I've actually gone and labeled your music as funk in our digital music library. It's actually just sitting there as rock or alternative rock. So oh, yeah. would, um, would funk be more appropriate? I, well, I say rock for, I'd say maybe two-thirds of the songs are more in the rock genre, and then a third of the songs are more are more funky. So some kind of straddle line between both, where there, there's some funky parts and some rock parts. So it's um, it's just a really good positive genre. It really has a really cheers me up a lot, which is always a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Going to have to go through the entire discography again and uh, you know just relabel the ones that are most definitely funk. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I remember there's even some sites where you can't even label your music as funk. I don't remember which site it was, but when I was uploading all the EP work, work I couldn't even find funk as a genre on one of them. Huh. Yeah, it was kind of uh, that's unfortunate, but it's it's a good good genre that I really thoroughly enjoy. Yeah, yeah. And you came by your musical talent through some schooling. Yeah, um, 
I basically started mostly with just guitar lessons as a kid with mm-hmm. like my dad would take me every weekend and then I did I had a lot of good times with just some high school guitar classes and practicing on my own mainly um there was I didn't really I was very tempted to go to university for it but it's very it's a very scary jump to sort of put all your eggs in that basket especially as like a teenager coming out of high school uh, yeah. to just go full out into music especially I wasn't nearly as into jazz as I am now at that time right and and you find that to be um a, a good alternative you know a, a a side venue in case the funk doesn't work out uh, yeah, sorry, it's out of, well, yeah, we're going to university and, like, having other positions. Uh, definitely, it's just makes you feel a little bit more secure mm-hmm. than going all in with music. I've heard uh, other people say, you know, that uh, they're musicians, um, but um, they, uh, they've they got this other job, this, uh, this day job, um, just in case the music doesn't work out. But in your case, maybe it's the other way around. You've got the, uh, the day job and... Um, You've got the music stuff to fall back, and in case the day job doesn't work out. Well, it, that kind of happened with COVID for me. It was once we went to lockdown; like a lot of people were losing their minds. But for me, it was like yeah. finally I have all the time in the world to practice. And uh, for most of the weeks, I definitely had a good time just hiding away in my house, cranking in hours of guitar and saxophone and vocals and whatnot. Exactly. So, Somebody say never waste a good pandemic. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I still feel like I could have done more, but and I'm always like, there's always something more I could have done on it. So it's a little being built the tough of myself there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You've got something else you want to play? That's, uh, um, I've, I've got your other stuff too. I found some other uh, things, um, I think on SoundCloud, some uh, stuff that dates back to, I think, 2018, Heartbreak While yep. I Fall. Yeah, so that would be, uh, I think there's two EPs we did. Uh, I, we did, there's the one we were just listening to, Vagabond, and then there's her self-titled okay. one. Um, uh, if you want to listen to something a little bit slower, uh, one of the crowd or band favorite songs is a song called Together. I would recommend that one. Okay. Yeah. So let, let's have a listen to that. And then um, when we come back, I'm going to give a, a quick pitch for our fundraiser. So uh, perhaps awesome. you can, uh, can join into that. Um, for sure just to get people uh, moving and shaking and donating while they're doing it, to go to radiowaterloo.ca slash give uh, while we all listen to Together, Together.
big heavy sigh at the end of that. That's Tamako and a song called Together. I think, Denny, that's from a previous EP, not the current one. Yes, that was our first EP um, back in 2018. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. We, I did it, uh, the whole EP at Seneca College when I was in the independent music production program. Aha. Uh-huh. So, yeah. And you found that to be a helpful thing in um, furthering your career? Definitely. It was a good opportunity to sort of fast forward on a lot of lessons and things you would learn the hard way by doing it over years is sort of like a crash course in how to do music as an independent artist. Yeah. Yeah. Got to meet some great people there too. And really sort of, that was the first step in my transition to doing music in a serious way. Yeah. How do you find revenues? Um, I see it. You're on Spotify. You're on um, some of the other streaming sites. Do you find um, revenues from performing are enough to keep you in pizza and beer? Oh, uh, no, 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 no way. <laughs> um, I would, uh, it's all work. Um, the biggest revenue for music uh, before the pandemic was uh, live shows and, um, and merch. Ah. Uh, streaming was only a few dollars here and there, um, mainly from Bandcamp, where I was noticing where we get some a few dollars for people actually putting money into it. Um, but for like streams, you need thousands and thousands, or I guess say millions of streams on the major sites like yeah. Spotify and YouTube to really make any income. Uh, although the music we record was always more of a, I want to have something out there so we've got an idea of what our live shows would be, and the live shows were where we really killed it. Um, and this pandemic has sort of given me the opportunity to kind of flip it and really focus entirely on the recording to make the best possible recording out there. Right. We're not juggling booking shows and prepare and rehearsing at the same time as trying to write and record. Right. As uh, trying to lead into a, a nice segue there for our own uh, fundraising efforts are... In our case, uh, the pandemic has been uh, somewhat devastating to the radio station as well. You know, we're dependent, uh, for the most part, on programmer fees. Anybody, it's community radio, so anybody who has an interest in putting some kind of um, radio show on the air where uh, you know, you've got a hobby or uh, some interest in music or um, uh, an idea for, uh, for news or actuality reporting or something like this, uh, CKMS Community Connections, programmers come to the station and pay a fee, a programmer fee of uh, $30 a month for an hour a week show in prime time and $15 a month for an hour a week show in the off-peak hours. But with the COVID, you know, people have had reductions in their own income and for them, uh, for some of them, the um, ability to participate in community radio uh, is just not there anymore. And so that's one of the first sources of revenue for us to go. Also, we had to cancel our spring fundraising drive and so, you know, um, we are currently in survival mode. And in order to, to really survive, we need some donations from our community. Uh, right now, our leaderboard looks like it's set at uh, about $563.37. It's a, a live updating uh, screen on our website. So if somebody were to go to radiowaterloo.ca slash give and make a pledge for a donation there, you'll see that uh, that leaderboard number increase by whatever amount you uh, you choose to donate. And from there, you'll go to the actual donation website where you click on a button and provide your um, authentication to a credit card or PayPal or whatever to actually uh, send the money to us. But I would love to see that progress meter go up um, you know, for uh, as little as, uh, what, $37, will uh, we'll hit the $600 mark, and uh, that will be a great level to achieve at the end of uh, Community Connections today. So I urge everybody who's listening, who's enjoying the show, who uh, likes the music of, of Tamako and all the other artists that we've played in the past, uh, go to radiowaterloo.ca slash give, make a donation, and keep us on the air. Thank you for letting me do that, Danny. Appreciate oh, it. Oh, no, awesome. <laughs> I appreciate um, you having me on here, and it's important to have stations like yours around for bands to get the word out of these yeah. new bands. Yeah. yeah. If any band is, is out there listening, you know, send us your new music. Uh, go to um, radiowaterloo.ca slash how to uh, slash submit, and that'll uh, tell you how you can uh, get 
music to us, uh, one of the easiest ways is to just send us an email, office at radiowaterloo.ca. The entire music committee looks at that uh, email. We get hundreds of messages a day, you know, uh, some from um, international locations, you know, lots of stuff from Germany, the UK, um, from, uh, from South Africa, uh, all kinds of places. But I concentrate on the, on the local bands, you know, um, Canadian bands, uh, KW bands, um, and hopefully get you coming into the studio. You know, um, and, and some people who've, who've contacted us are just thrilled to be on the radio. You know, it's the first time for them. A lot of new up-and-coming bands are uh, first broken out on community radio. Community radio and campus radio both. So I know that community radio serves a really valuable purpose in the community to help artists get out there. So radiowaterloo.ca slash give. Keep us on the air. And then send us email at office at radiowaterloo.ca if you've got something that uh, you want to contribute, whether it's music, spoken word, uh, poetry, um, or anything else that uh, you'd like to get on the radio. You're not just active in music, are you? You've, you've got some social justice interests as well. Uh, yeah, for sure. I always feel like I could do more, and it's a really hard juggling act when you're really focusing on one thing or the other. There's so many great, you know, causes and things going on. Uh, it's I've always been a bit more on the environmental side is what my main focus always was. And yeah. yeah You're one of the, um, the, the only musicians to come into the uh, studio who's actually outed me as a, a Green Party member. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, that, I do that, a little bit of research. <laughs> that was kind of cool to, to hear, actually. You know, it's, it's good that, you know, from my perspective, that there is a political interest from musicians because you see that fairly regularly. You, know, you see fairly large names coming up to, uh, to promote some social justice cause, um, you know, actors, musicians, um, bands coming out to play at um, political um, venues, political rallies, and bands who don't want to have their music associated with certain other political parties. So where does Tamako stand on that? Well, yeah, I would somewhat understand where, you know, there's some people I wouldn't want my music being associated with or played with. I would definitely was hoping or like to use my music as a platform or as a way to be able to get my voice heard about issues that I find important, whether it's climate change or, you know, pollution recycling and all these kind of mm -hmm. environmental issues it's uh, and the you know the more successful I am the band the greater reach I can have with the voice and hopefully have some positive impacts on yeah. these very important issues sort of slide it in by the side you know uh, have you got anything on uh, in your repertoire that's um, of a social justice bent um, specifically I, well mr. twister is somewhat of a politically motivated okay, yeah, song yeah. Um, and there's, it's more so there's more references to different ideas and social justice issues in songs. Uh, While I Fall is a good example. It's a song sort of about, um, it was a, it's just about not just me, but also, you know, other people who are kind of, you know, having struggling at a certain point and, you know, a lot of, it feels like sometimes people just like to watch other people crash and burn, whether it's the environment yeah, or, uh -huh. you know, poverty and, you know, and it's very frustrating not to lend a hand out yeah. and help out. Yeah. yeah, it's it's wonderful to see, you know, publicly visible engagement by bands like Tamako, by by you, by um, you know, all those other artists that have uh, come to the front to um, promote or or to uh, to advocate for a, a particular issue. Um, Canadian musician uh, Jan Arden, for example. Is, uh, has contacted um, our executive producer, Jennifer Strong, who also runs the Blue Sky Horse radio program. And uh, Jennifer will uh, be having an interview with Jan Arden in an upcoming episode of Blue Sky Horse radio. So, you know, that, that sort of engagement by um, a, a big-name, well-known artist like Jan Arden uh, coming on community radio to uh, advocate for a social cause is, is just wonderful. Definitely, yeah. I mean, some of the best things I felt like we've done were our we did some live benefit shows so we did one for cancer research mm -hmm. we've done we did a lights out for earth hour and we've done uh another one where it was for uh music heels um it's like a charity for funding you know uh, music uh 
therapy and that those kind of and oh, those yeah, kind of yeah. initiatives. Yeah, yeah, that's and a, uh, that feels great to do those things. I'd love to do more. Hopefully, as things live shows return. Yeah, hope there's a couple of. Um, Social events um, you know, from the uh, the local um, neighborhood community, uh, Festival of Neighborhoods community. They're doing a, a mosaic of neighborhoods online, uh, upcoming on I think Sunday, the fifteenth of uh, of November. Um, don't don't know if they have any music planned for that. Uh, there's an agenda on their uh, website. Uh, I should probably have a look at that. But oh, yeah. uh, that's I think a place where um, some online engagement could happen as well. Definitely have to keep, mm-hmm. check it out. Yeah. So we have another listen. How about uh, we have a, a quick listen to While I Fall? Sure. And then uh, we can uh, actually hear what it's all about. While I Fall by Tobacco, to, uh, sorry, Tomaco, um, here on CKMS Community Connections. <laughs> by Tamako from Toronto and on the phone with us Denny from the band hey thanks for having me <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> Tamako doesn't sound like 
a regular name. Uh, can you give us a bit of background there? Sure, yeah. Um, it came about just, I was waiting to go over to a band practice and was watching an episode of Simpsons, one of the good <laughs> old ones, and uh, there's an episode about some GMOs, and the GMO they made in that was a tomato tobacco cross called Tomaco, uh-huh. and I thought it's a perfect fit, um, catchy, short, and addictive, kind of going <laughs> for that band. Yes. A little bit of that, you know, uh, GMO political stuff in there for fun. Yeah, a little bit of uh, social awareness there too. Absolutely, mm-hmm. gets it all in there. Yeah. You're and, uh, fairly prominent on on the social media sites. I think you've got um, what you've got. Well, you've you've got your own website, Tamaco.ca. Yeah. Got about several hundred followers on some other sites. Yeah, yeah. Um, got to stay engaged sometimes. A little bit tough pumping out content with the coronavirus, so it usually shows and rehearsals were the main thing, but uh, working on sort of building up a big stockpile of stuff for us to kind of roll out as, as the you know year goes on. Yeah, so you've got uh, the social media sites uh, for Instagram, just scrolling through some Instagram stuff here now. Yeah, just and at Tamako Band. Uh, we've got Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. I, I do have a yeah. Twitter, but I don't really use it as much i'm always somewhat cautious on what i want to put up online uh what i want to post whatnot so besides just band stuff and we got yeah band camp we have uh soundcloud what else do we have uh, um, spotify yeah, in there too yeah yep I, spotify i think i saw some references to apple music and uh maybe google music yeah. in there too amazon yeah uh we're there's some great uh Fortunately for indie musicians, there's some great ways to get your music distributed. So um, a couple of them are like DistroKid and CD Baby, and you can get your music uh, basically for a small relative fee uh, just on all the major platforms. Yeah. So there's a bit of an upfront cost there to actually participate in um, in these online social media things. So do you end up recovering the cost or not so much? Uh, maybe for the attendance of the shows and some merch probably kind of evened out okay. the cost, but not directly through streaming or whatnot. Yeah, quite a number of streams before you'll get, you know, 50 bucks yeah. even. Yeah. Well, uh, definitely, well, I've already got them online, actually. The um, All your social media links on uh, the CKMS Community Connections website, radiowaterloo.ca slash CCC, where currently the YouTube live video is streaming as well in the bonus footage section, so... You'll be able awesome. to uh, connect with Tamako uh, in all the different ways possible at radiowaterloo.ca slash ccc. What have you Thank got you. in the way of, of upcoming stuff? I mean, in, in-person in shows are, are pretty much canceled. Yeah, so they're canceled for now. Um, right now we have sort of two projects in the works. So the main project that is in full steam is working on a new EP. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is going to be a bit different, much more polished than the first two. We're taking a lot more time, making a lot more efforts. Uh, I've hired a producer uh, from one of my other favorite local bands. His name is Phil Tessis, and okay. uh, he is from After Funk. Um, they've definitely played in Waterloo a few times. They're, they kind of play all over the place. And so just I sort of learned from the first two EPs different lessons of what I want to learn, and one I just thought, you know, every good writer has like an editor, so sort of acting as like a you know, second pair of eyes and, you know, tell me what needs to be there, what doesn't need to be there, and what could be stronger, what could be, uh, what needs more, what's missing, you know, some new parts. So he's been really helpful, and I can really tell there's going to be a big jump in the, in the just quality and the, you know, how tight and together yeah. the songs are going to be for the next EP. Where will, we, uh, where will you be recording this? Uh, well, right now, uh, we're going to be, I think with COVID and just for sort of a budgetary purpose, we're going to be recording it in our basements and our homes. Okay. Different members of, uh, uh, of After Funk will be helping out and recording on it for parts. So it'll be sort of a you know, group project that every, keep it safe. You know, A lot of us are able to set up recording stuff at home. I spent okay. uh, most of yesterday just editing recordings, demo vocals for one of the songs in my house and sending it off to him. So it's sort of a home project, but we'll be uh, 
we have looked into some studios for uh, drums. We haven't decided yet. Though. Okay. And so yeah. when you're assembling all these different tracks, what sort of uh, – you must be using software. I can't imagine you're still splicing tape. Yeah. Oh, it's all online. Yeah, or all, not online. Sorry, it's all digital with uh, audio – digital audio workstations. So Pro Tools, Logic, that kind of thing. Okay. So we put it all together. Okay. Yeah. One of these days, we need to get somebody to come into the studio here and explain how all that stuff works. Because you know, I'm quite sure yeah. there's other people out there listening to uh, the radio that might want to do some of the recording on their own as well. You know, can't afford professional studios, but some of this stuff is uh, available at you know a fraction of the cost. Oh, yeah, absolutely a fraction. It's uh, more attainable and accessible than ever, especially if you're mainly going to be using, if you're going to hire somebody for beats or just have a backing track. Um, or even just simple uh, acoustic stuff. It's a really manageable to do on your own. You get some really professional quality stuff. It's when you get into the seven-person band stuff, like Tobacco, where studios and stuff like that kind of gets more involved. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a little bit more challenging. Just getting set up, just coordinating everybody to get into the studio is going to take you know a good chunk of studio time, and it all has to be paid for. Yeah, yeah. So it's definitely. Uh, it's going to be a big cost-saving measure having a lot of us do ma- uh, many of the parts from home with our own interfaces, uh, which is what we you know, get our in signals from our instruments into the computers and using our own software and then putting it all together. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and then the other project we're doing, uh, we may be filming some, uh, some doing some headshots and maybe helping a student out with his project on uh, how bands are dealing with COVID. Uh, we're just uh, figuring that out now, but we're, we'll be hopefully in the next in the past next month we'll have it filmed or whatnot. COVID the together. musical documentary. Yeah, just uh, they want to do a little segment interview the band about um, how we're dealing with COVID as a the mainly a live act that was hoping to tour a lot. So yeah. um, it's going to come into one of our rehearsals, which we are still fortunate enough to be able to do. Um, yeah. we missed rehearsals for a few months there when we were fully locked down. So it was really nice to get back together yeah. back in uh, the summer once. I do hope we don't get back to that. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, I hope that all the severe lockdown stuff is, is beyond us. But, you know, it's winter is coming, and uh, you know, things may actually get worse before they get better. So it's a good thing that you've got this thing on the go. I'm sure that the producer of that has just a wealth of material to draw from. There's, you know, every band that I've spoken to since well, March, really, has um, suffered from, from the pandemic lockdown. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely, um, I feel like the songs are really strong. I've been able to weed out um, a lot of the weaker ideas and sort of highlight and pull up front the stronger, more catchy stuff. So it should be, should hopefully, you know, take some lemons and turn into lemonade as the cliche goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, just that extra time to work on stuff uh, is, is really useful. Have you found that uh, COVID itself is working its way into the theme of your lyrics? A little bit. I have a song sort of about the it can just feel sometimes that we're not going out and doing as many things that you're kind of stuck in a loop and a grind more so than ever so there's a song I'm calling loop which is sort of about how we're you know, constantly you wake up in the same house stuck in the, doing the same thing over and over again because of COVID yeah 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 that's okay. uh don't know how you can uh, really translate that into funk. As, uh, you know, funk, the other meaning there is, uh, you know, the broody, uh, moody type of, uh, of atmosphere. So perhaps yeah. that's a, a kind of funk that we weren't really thinking about. It is actually a, the, one of the funkier songs that that, uh, that song's about. So it's a definitely a good fit for the two, just kind of a the moody, kind of uh, dancey vibe. Yeah. Just uh, losing your mind a little bit, stuck in your house all day. <laughs> exactly. Denny, I want to thank you an awful lot for being with me for an hour here on CKMS Community Connections. And wish you well. I really hope you come here to Waterloo uh, to do some touring because I would love to come to a live show, you know, a high-energy funk show here in Waterloo. I would love to come to. I can't wait till. That is a possibility. We can definitely would love to come by the station and yeah. maybe play some songs, stripped down and acoustic or something. Yeah, even yeah. just uh, acoustic funk would would be uh, excellent. Yeah, it's uh, it's doable. We did it for uh, Lights Out, so I can see us not overpowering your studio of you know high voltage <laughs> rock. So, uh, but thanks so much for having us. Uh, really appreciate uh, every opportunity to spread the word and be on a local station. Yeah. Really, 
appeal to local audiences. Thanks, Denny. Denny Kopp from Tamako. You've been listening to CKMS Community Connections. My name is Bob Jonkman. Executive producer is Jennifer Strong. Associate producers are Jeff Steger, Dylan Bravener, and uh, Jordan Dorans, who you can hear again on the Saturday edition at noon. Don't forget to go to radiowaterloo.ca slash give. Provide us some funds to keep Radio Waterloo on the air. See you again next week.